This is an M-rated game, so viewer discretion is advised. Now let's review No More Heroes, Desperate Struggle. Now I reviewed the first title in the series about two years ago, and I liked it. It was an interesting idea that was done in a very stylish way. However, there was plenty of problems with it. Just one example of that was that the worlds always felt the same and closed off. And while there was some claustrophobic battle areas in this game, they aren't as bad as the original title. Like always, I'm only going to show the video for the first part of the game. I hate reviews that spoil too much of the game. So if you're wondering why I'm not showing you most of the title, that's why. The story this time around shows Travis Touchdown retired from the Assassin game. He comes back to avenge the murder of his best friend. Since he has been gone so long, he has to make his way back up the ranks again in order to go up against the people who killed his friend. Unfortunately, this time there are a lot more enterprising killers out there, so you will have to start at the rank of 51. There is quite a lot of humor and sexuality throughout the whole game, as you can probably see. Uh, uh, oh, hot damn. All right, anyways, uh, the controls. This time around, you use the A button to swing your katana, and you use the B button to do melee attacks like wrestling moves. When the enemy is effectively stunned, you do a finishing move on them normally by having you just swing the Wiimote in a certain direction to do it. Yes, it can be a mindless hack and slash brawler at times, but it is still fun to play, mainly because of the different environments that you'll travel through. Last time the environments that you fought people in leading up to the boss seemed the same and kind of dull. And while it is kind of still a grind to get through, at least it's not the same corridor over and over again. Plus, later in the game, they'll have you play as other characters, so that changes things up a little bit more. They have made some improvements over the last game, like completely scrapping the overworld. If you want to go somewhere, it's as simple as finding it on the menu. Traversing the overworld last time was one of the biggest problems with the first title. It was ugly to look at, barely anyone was in it, and it was tedious to go from one point to another. Also, thankfully, you'll never have to pay to go up against a ranking boss battle. You can normally just go to the next part fairly easily, so you don't have to worry about grinding for cash to advance the story. However, if you want to improve your stats, weapons, or clothes, you'll need some money, and you can do that by getting a job. This time around, those jobs are very cleverly done by having you play 8-bit game representations of them. There were quite a few jobs to play, but the one I found the easiest to make money on was this tiling game. But the water pipe game was just as much fun to play, and so were a few others. Even the attribute upgrades are done in an 8-bit game format. The first title really had some fun 8-bit graphical references, but this one takes it to the next level. I can only imagine what the next game in the No More Heroes franchise is going to look like. Maybe it'll be all 8-bit graphics, like what Capcom did with Mega Man, only with a lot of pixelated gore. The boss battles always had a different feel to them, whether it be a normal normal battle in a weird environment, or using mechs to kill each other. It was always a blast to play. There are even side revenge missions if you really want to kill some more bad guys for fun. So there's plenty of replayability in this game. No More Heroes 2 Desperate Struggle is a really fun game. It's nice to see that the publishers have listened to all the complaints that we had about the first game and fixed them. If you are in the mood for a really brutal and entertaining hack and slash game, it really doesn't get much better than this title. And I think it's completely worth a buy.